So a great deal of drug discovery um, and drug research is aided and abetted by uh, genetic techniques, um, you know, which take advantage of the fact that uh, all of these protein targets uh, that drugs act on, um, including receptor proteins, transporters, you know, that require ATP um, to fight forces, you know, to take substances from one side of a membrane to another, uh, ion channels, uh, you know, including ligand gated ion channels, which are really ionotropic receptors, um, enzymes, uh, like synthesizing enzymes and degradative enzymes, all these protein targets uh, of drugs actually are derived from the expression of genes uh, in, you know, cells. So there's the transcription of genes where a messenger RNA is read, you know, basically off, complementary to the sequence that you see in the unwound, you know, portion of DNA. Um, and then that messenger RNA that's called transcription, right? The, the, the transcribing of the DNA into mRNA. Um, and then that leaves the nucleus in, and enters the cytoplasm where it, you know, interacts with the ribosome. And, uh, you know, basically that uh, message in the messenger RNA or mRNA is translated uh, into, you know, one of these proteins, the, the appropriate sequence of those 20 amino acids that make up proteins, you know, nine of which are essential um, that must come from dietary sources. So um, some of these techniques include in situ hybridization. Uh, and in situ means at the site. Uh, this is where you um, inject a radio labeled uh, complementary uh, messenger RNA. So it has a sequence that's complementary that will bind specifically to the single stranded mRNA that's on its way you know, to interact with the ribosome and tra be translated into a protein. Um, and, you know, it's complementary mRNA that will express a particular receptor, let's say the dopamine D2 receptor, for example, or transporter. And by injecting that radio labeled complementary mRNA, it'll bind to the mRNA transcripts that are on their way to be translated into to dopamine D2 receptors. Uh, and then you can, you know, get a sense of how much, you know, expression is actually going on. You can, you know, remove the nucleus cumbens, for example, and do an in vitro, you know, grind up and, you know, uh, do a count basically of how much uh, radioactivity um, that you see. Um, there's also something called antisense technology, which doesn't involve any kind of radio labeling at all. Um, but this is actually just flooding the brain or a portion of the brain with the complementary uh, messenger RNA uh, for, let's say, the dopamine D2 receptor. So this neuron, this dopaminergic neuron is, you know, um, you know, generating D2 receptors, or let's say the postsynaptic membrane is generating D2 receptors. Um, well, you know, if you flood that area with the complementary mRNA, it's going to bind to those mRNA transcripts and take them out of commission because they're going to be now double stranded and they cannot be fed into the ribosome, right? So that could, that could sort of temporarily or transiently lower uh, you know, the replacement uh, or the translation, you know, the production uh, of additional D2 receptors for a while, it can reduce the expression, um, you know, the presence of D2 receptors in that postsynaptic membrane. And this is using, again, it's called antisense. You're taking the, the, the mRNA strand, you know, that's on its way, the transcript that's on its way to the ribosome to be translated into a protein is referred to as the sense strand. It actually makes sense, that particular sequence. Uh, it'll, it'll put together the right sequence of amino acids. So you add in the antisense, you know, sort of the complementary strand that'll bind to it, uh, make it double-stranded, make it incapable of feeding into a ribosome. So there's no translation uh, into the D2 receptor in this example. And then there are what we call DNA microarrays. And these are like, uh, oh, it's a way where you could sort of um, you know, screen for the expression of many, many, many different kinds of mRNAs, many genes all at once. And this consists of like a, what they call a gene chip, which is lots of little wells. And you've got uh, complementary uh, DNAs actually down in the base there. <clears throat> and then you, you know, basically, uh, you know, flood over, you know, the blood or, you know, or some fluid or some saliva. And then, you know, the expression um, that'll be uh, generated will, will bind in those specific wells, you know, for the genes that are actually being currently expressed. Uh, additional genetic techniques include, for example, knockout mice. These were very popular for a while. This is where you uh, specifically delete a particular gene from the genome and then see, you know, what happens in terms of that animal's behavior or development. Um, usually this was done actually in, uh, you know, the embryo. Um, so it had to be done very early. So the, the gene that was knocked out, 
you know, uh, would, you know, not be present even for all these developmental processes. And there are some genes, for example, that are uh, expressed and essential for survival basically during development and may do something different, you know, sort of functionally uh, in the adult. Uh, so they have what are now called conditional knockouts where you can actually, um, you know, add in some kind of, you know, genetic material where you could later, you know, deliver a drug, for example, that would bind to that region of the, you know, DNA and prevent the expression. So you can conditionally knock it, knock it out. Yeah, there were there were efforts to sort of, uh, you know, knock out genes in specific tissues as opposed to just the entire, you know, body and brain. Um, and then, you know, there's actually a lot of uh, very popular and effective uh, and um, remarkable, you know, uh, advances in what we call transgenic mouse technology. Uh, where you introduce foreign, you know, DNA into the mouse germline, um, and then you and there there are all sorts of you know specially modified what they call transgenic mice uh, that you can order, you know, from you know the <laughs> Jackson Labs, Charles River, like all these different sources for you know various exp uh, experiments um, because they uh, are developing in very specific ways. You want to see what the um, influence of these additional added genes into the germline. You know, actually do uh, to the behavior uh, and you know the the physiology and how in many cases how drugs may impact these transgenic mice.